force sensitive simply because if she was force sensitive then one would think that uh, she would be a target for the Knights of Ren and Kylo Ren, unless she's just been in hiding or she's so old. Apparently, she's lived over a thousand years. She's had this particular watering hole for about a century, and it's like another bar you'd find in the corner of the Star Wars universe. So she's a character kind of like Yoda in a sense that She's been around for a long, long time, which is interesting just in the grander scope of the movies themselves um, and what we're going to be getting in novels and in cartoons because if she's been around a 1,000 years, then certainly she's a character that could be introduced in other stories, maybe even in a background in, in, in an anthology film like Rogue One. Um, and you could, if she has the ability as it relates to storytelling through her eyes, and we believe she may do this to uh, to Ray to reveal to her, you know, what her destiny is, um, then you're provided an opportunity to take a character and plug her into other stories, and she could tell backstories on things, which I think is, is pretty unique. I'm looking forward to seeing her speak. I really love her voice in the trailers, and Lupita Nyong'o, the actress, is just so incredibly talented. I, I can't wait to see what she's going to do with this with the CGI character, I mean, that's the thing, too. We've got two full, fully, at least as far as we know, we think Maz might be might be practical at certain points, but we believe that she's mostly CGI, and certainly Snoke is CGI. We haven't seen any of this. And, and you know, people speculate that they're hiding it because they don't want people to think of Jar Jar with a fully realized digital character. I, I think it's more storytelling. J.J. Abrams doesn't want to give up those characters yet he wants to hold that back he wants you to wait and discover the mystery box during the movie still drives me nuts when people use that wrong when people talk about the mystery box the mystery box happens when you watch the film it's the mystery box opening up as you watch it he may keep things because of the mystery box but the mystery box is not him hiding things in public it's discovering and opening up those boxes as you watch the the movie all right, so um, let's get to this behind-the-scenes footage. Uh, you got some goofy kid from Disney Channel narrating this. Um, you will hear, um, but won't see, obviously. You got a clip of, uh, of Poe talking. Um, General Hux is speaking in the, in, the, in the clip. He says fire and launches a couple of missiles. I believe that's what hits the First Order TIE fighter as it goes spinning out of the atmosphere. Uh, you'll hear Ray. Uh, saying, follow me to Finn as they run from the First Order. She's also running on the Millennium Falcon. You can hear her say, BB-8, hold on. And then there's a cool little, it's really quick. You'll hear it in the uh, audio. But this quick moment where you see Ray sitting in the pilot seat of the Millennium Falcon, and she's talking to herself, and she says, you can do this. And then you see Finn sitting in the chair of one of the guns. I think it's the lower gun. And he says, you can do this. All right, so here's the, uh, here's the audio from the Disney uh, behind-the-scenes video. The Star Wars galaxy is a dangerous place. Epic battles, remote worlds, strange creatures, and deadly threats at each turn. Fire. A long time ago, a group of young heroes banded together to save the galaxy from an evil empire. A dark new threat promises to destroy everything that they fought for. Now it's time for a new generation of heroes. We got company. Follow me. Ray, a scavenger searching for answers. And Finn, a rogue stormtrooper looking for something to fight for. I can do this. I can do this. Team up with a mysterious droid named BB-8. BB-8, hold on! These three must make a choice. Continue their journey alone or work together to defeat the dark side. See the newest chapter in the saga when Star Wars The Force Awakens arrives in theaters December 18th. Let me back it up here real quick to just that moment um, where she says, uh, you can do this, and he says, you can do this. It's really cool. Company. Follow me. Ray, a scavenger searching for answers. And Finn, a rogue stormtrooper looking for something to fight for. I can do this. I can do this. Team up with a mysterious... All right, so Finn says it first, and then Ray, and then Ray says it. Uh, but it's, it's, again, we're seeing these little nuggets of this movie... Uh, and, and, and I mean, they in and of themselves are so exciting to be able, again, I, I'm wondering, 
Okay, let me go this route. When I watched the full trailer, I was in such awe and wanting to take it all in that I almost didn't catch all of it when watching that first trailer. Like, it was all a blur because I, I just was trying to take it all in. And it's almost like, as weird as it sounds, I'm going to mentally have to prepare myself to watch this movie to just relax and let it play out just because we've been waiting for it for so long, right? All right, let me play this. I'm, I'm running out of time here, so let me play this last. Uh, this is the most recent TV spot. There's one point in this that I want to point out because it may tie into something else. So let me play it for you. And again, this might be new music too. What happened. It's true. All of it. We've heard this before. I will finish what you started. Get ready! For what? Now that was certainly that was certainly some new music in there. Um and the the drums make me feel like that's not John Williams, but then that orchestra and the the uh, the singing in the background. Um that makes me think that it is uh John Williams. Okay, so what I wanted to point out was and you can go if you go to uh if you go to YouTube and if you search on YouTube for the John Justice Show on YouTube, um, I've compiled all the um, – there's a playlist on there. And I think that's accessible to anybody. I'm about 99% sure it is. There's a playlist on my YouTube page um, where I've compiled all the different trailers. And so if you want if you don't want to go searching for all of them, if you want to go watch them, they're all available on there. The only thing I don't have on there is the, um, the that behind-the-scenes audio that I played for you just a moment ago. But all that being said, in that spot – she says, are you ready? Are you ready for what? They're flying. I'm pretty sure in that shot they're flying the Millennium Falcon already. Now, they've added Star, into Star Tours at Disneyland. They've added a sequence where you fly um, on the Star Speeder 3000 for Star Tours. And you, you end up on Jakku and you're basically tailing the Millennium Falcon as it's being chased by First Order um, TIE Fighters. Okay. Uh, and again, it's a, it's a, it's it's a scene from the movie, but not scenes from the movie. It was made specifically for Star Tours, so it's not like you're watching the movie. You're just you are you are in the film for this moment in a recreation of what happens in the movie. Okay, um, there's a moment, and spoiler alert for those that don't want to get ruined when you go on the ride. There's a moment in the on the ride when the Millennium Falcon essentially does a tail stand. It's flying, it pops up and sticks straight up in the air and kind of floats there for a moment. And as the TIE fighter approaches, whoever is, and it's Finn in the, in the, on the ride, Finn fires the gun while the Millennium Falcon is stalled in the air and shoots it out of the sky. It's an awesome shot. It's kind of like, whoop, and it kind of just hangs there for a moment, he shoots it, and then they fly off. And I'm wondering if in that um, in that spot, when she says, are you ready, ready for what, if she pulls that maneuver and um, and that's when Finn takes out that final uh, TIE fighter that's chasing him. Uh, it, you can go online if you look for um, – it's been released. The whole sequence is available to watch online. People have been uh, doing periscopes um, of that particular sequence and posting it up online over the course of the past few days because they've opened up the season of the Force uh, at uh, at Disneyland. So I just want to wrap up on this, um, my own journey to The Force Awakens and watching The Phantom Menace uh, over the weekend. Um, I personally still really enjoy that movie. Uh, it, you know, it's clear that Jar Jar didn't work the way that they had hoped. And it's interesting when you go back and you watch The Empire Strikes Back, the the making of that movie. And George Lucas talks about how if they couldn't get Yoda to work, it could have ruined the whole film. He says that. You know, if Yoda doesn't work, if it's just a dumb puppet, then it crushes the whole movie, you know, under the weight of that. Because if you don't believe that, you're not believing anything. And I don't think that it was people didn't believe Jar Jar. I mean, I thought the special effects for it being 1999, well, we're going on 16 years ago, right? Um... 
you know, the CGI for being that long ago was pretty outstanding. I mean, I'm, I watched it over the weekend, and, I mean, it, it, it was solid. You know, it's just the character didn't work. You know, the, the voice didn't work. The mannerisms didn't work. Um, my biggest complaint, I, I'm, I'm kind of okay with Jar Jar and the whole movie until the end. And when we go on Jar Jar's big adventure um, during the, uh, the ground battle on Naboo. Um, when he, he, all the nonsense with the tanks, it's like, it takes away all the threat of, from that scene and that battle and just turns it into sort of side, you know, sideshow gags. I, I mean, look, I have a similar complaint in, um, in a, in attack of the clones. I don't like it when R2 and 3PO get all goofy and R2's dragging 3PO's head across the sand in the Geonosian arena. And he says, Oh, this is such a drag. I just, that, that, I mean, that, that doesn't bug, bug me nearly as much as Jar Jar. Now, that being said, I still really enjoy the movie, but George was right. I mean, that movie suffered under the weight of people not liking Jar Jar Binks. The interesting thing when I watched it this time was I'm so into Star Wars right now, and I'm a sponge for anything new and, you know, oh, and analyzing and overanalyzing every frame and every little nuance of, of new footage that we see or something we hear or what we find in a book. I, I found myself watching The Phantom Menace through new eyes again, and it was really enjoyable. I, I'm really looking forward to watching all the other movies now in this um, sort of hyper-sensitive, acute stage of Star Wars fandom and sort of watching it with new eyes and taking it all in again and really focusing on it. You know, we've got iPads in the house, and oftentimes I'll find myself watching TV, and I'm on the iPad at the same time, and even watching movies. And I, I, I've begun to now implement my own rule watching films to keep the iPad off my, che- off my, off my lap and just to watch the movie, even if it's something I've seen a bunch of times before. And, and really just allow myself to get immersed in it. And I, I hadn't done that the past couple of times that I'd watched The Phantom Menace, and I think I'd actually watched it a couple of months ago, if 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 that long. Um, and this time, I just put everything aside, and I allowed myself to watch it, and I really found it to be an enjoyable experience. If just because I know that I'm watching this with the purpose that I'm going to watch all these movies, and I'm soaking it all in, waiting for you know Star Wars: The Force Awakens, and this is and this is a part of that, and it makes it you know, even, even more exciting. So, you know, if you're on your own, uh, you know, journey to the force awakens, I know my dad is, I know my dad's doing his own, his kind of own version of this, of working through the movies and watching the clone wars. And I'm doing that in the background too. When I'm not, um, when I'm not watching the movies during the weekends, I've actually been watching the clone wars in chronological, chronological order, which has been a lot of fun. I haven't done that yet. And this is the first time I've been actually watching them in the order that they are supposed to be watched, which is really cool. So, All right, that wraps up episode uh, number 27 of the Star Wars podcast. I'll be back next week for episode 28. Probably we'll have watched Attack of the Clones by then, so we'll talk a little bit about that and the information that comes out between now and then. Thank you so much for checking out the podcast. Again, follow me on iTunes. Drop me a rating on iTunes. Uh, Leave me a comment if you would. Uh, You can also find the podcast now on Spreaker. And on Stitcher as well, depending on where you're watching this or if you've been or listening to this. And I guess that's it. So have yourself a uh, fantastic week. And until next week, may the Force be with you always.